Hi guys. Well, it is a chilly Saturday night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is Saturday, May 28th, 2022 or something like that. It is Memorial Day weekend and while everyone else is out partying, everyone with a life out partying tonight, I am sitting here doing what I always do, talking about the collapse of the planet. I notice it has been three weeks, I guess, since I have brought you my Saturday Hopium Roundup rant, my Apocaloptimism Hopium Roundup rant. And guys, I think the reason is I just can't stand it anymore. You know, I used to have fun doing this, uh, poking fun at the apocaloptimist and the hopium smokers and all of that, but uh, I don't know, maybe like Michael Rupert, I'm just starting to lose my sense of humor about it, so uh, I prepared this roundup and I just started going through it and just getting this, you know, this sick feeling. Yes, how about uh, green energy from sewage and furniture from plastic waste? There you go. Uh, we need more sewage on the planet. We're going to save the planet with sewage and then uh, make furniture out of our plastic waste. Oh boy, but uh, anyway, while that's happening, uh, don't worry. We got to check in. Do we want to check in with the boys at Davos or how Antonio Guterres about his plan? We're going to start. Let's go over there to Davos, Switzerland. Many, many. Uh, many uh, choices here and now of course the Davos Switzerland story has been eaten by my computer see even my computer is uh, it, it is spinning out this uh, this crap anyway we have a global gauge to set the world aright. A-R-I-G-H-T. Never heard the word aright in my entire life. Oh, this is the Christian Science Monitor. This is the second time I've featured the Christian Science Monitor in a rant this week. So, uh... This is the Christian Science Monitor's uh, review of a global gauge to set the world aright from the boys in Davos. <clears throat> the first five months of 2022 have provided vivid illustrations of how the world's problems have become even more interconnected. The war in Ukraine has exacerbated the effects of climate change on food insecurity in Africa and Asia, and its impact on fuel supplies has prolonged inflation and goods shortages resulting from the corona panic. Blah, blah, blah. We have heard it all before, but don't worry. You hear, heard it here, right here in the Christian Science Monitor. You know, the anti-doomer. Christian Science Monitor, but, but, this year may also mark a turning point in the way the world addresses its challenges. One sign is momentum. This is the Christian Science Monitor, not the Onion. One sign is momentum towards setting standards in the way corporations measure their environmental and social impact and create transparency in the way they are governed. Yes, 
business leaders gathering at the annual meeting of the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, this week are considering a, quote, global baseline that would measure how well they meet their commitments on issues like climate change and inequality. The framework was drafted by a new International Sustainability Standards Board established by global leaders at the United Nations Climate Change Conference in Scotland last November and endorsed by the Group of Seven last week. Okay. We have those uh, responsible corporations saving the planet. Yes, corporate responsibility. We can all count on uh, the boys in Davos saving the planet, but uh, of course the boys in Davos are just riding on the coattails of the UN. You know, this guy, Antonio Guterres, uh, you know, I, I'm beginning to kind of like this guy. You know, he, he gets the problem. He just has a little, uh, his problem is the solution to all the problems he gets. What are you looking at? Looking back here or what? You don't like hanging out with Tigger? Okay. So what is on Antonio Guterres' mind? How is Antonio going to save the planet? Uh, whatever the boys in Davos can't come up with, we have Antonio Guterres. UN launches plan to speed up renewables usage as new report shows looming climate disaster. Yes, the United Nations chief on Wednesday launched a five-point plan, a five-point plan to jumpstart broader use of renewable energies, hoping to revive world attention on climate change. As the UN's weather agency reported that greenhouse gas concentrations, ocean heat, sea level rise, and ocean acidification all hit new records last year. Yes, I think I've already mentioned this in a previous rant about we must end fossil fuel pollution and accelerate the renewable energy transition before we incinerate our only home. Time is running out. His latest stark warnings. Yes, his latest stark warning about how the state of the climate report is a dismal litany, litany of humanity's failure to tackle climate disruption. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. So in his five-point plan, Yes, which leans into the next UN conference taking place in Egypt in November. Guterres called for fostering technology transfer and lifting of intellectual property protections in renewable strategy technologies like battery storage. Oh, man, police, uh, okay, then, uh, <clears throat> so we have Antonio Guterres jump-starting renewable energy, we have the boys in Davos creating a new corporate responsibility, sustainability, whatever, Let's see, we have green energy from sewage, and then my own sister, my own sister with a straight face sending me a story, you know, she lives in Vermont, right out of Vermont, a Richmond firm, I guess Richmond, Vermont firm, aims to help 
save the planet by cleaning ocean vessels with robots. I've heard a rant, I know someone else in the Doomosphere in the past couple of weeks, who was it in the Doomosphere already covered this story about the uh, how cleaning ships with robots is going to save the planet, but you will have to find that story out there. I, I told my sister that, uh, I emailed my sister that I would be sure to include her article in one of my uh, Hopium Roundup rants, and she emailed me back, what is a Hopium? What is a Hopium? Well, I'm giving you, well, a Hopium is green energy from sewage. A Hopium is making furniture from plastic waste to save the planet. A Hopium uh, is the UN's five-point plan to save the planet. A Hopium is the boys in Davos saving the planet. This long article, which I, which I just cannot, it, it's just too depressing to even read this long involved story. How climate scientists keep, huh, keep, huh, keep, uh, the hope alive as damage worsens. All right. Oh, Jacqueline Gill. Didn't we just talk about Jacqueline Gill? What were we talking about this uh, hopium addict recently in another article I was reading? This is the opening story of how climate scientists stay hopeful. I'm just going to read the opening and you can figure out how the rest of the story goes. In the course of a single year, University of Maine climate scientist Jacqueline Gill lost both her mother and her stepfather. She struggled with infertility. Uh, uh, moving along, she struggled with infertility, meaning this optimistic climate scientist uh, was trying to bring more children onto the planet, not having much luck. Then, during research in the Arctic, she developed embolisms in both lungs, was transferred to an ICU in Siberia and nearly died. She was airlifted back home and later had a hysterectomy. Well, there's some good news. Finally, the woman had a hysterectomy. Then the pandemic hit. There you go. Well, at least you got a hysterectomy out of the deal. And uh, the planet doesn't need to deal with your uh, optimistic children. So anyway, guys, uh, how climate scientists find... <laughs> All right. Can you catch monkey pox on a plane? We're going to skip over that, but this is one, okay, we're going to, uh, since I was over at Fortune Magazine, trying to find out whether you, I can catch monkey pox on a plane. I, if I, if you enjoy that story, maybe you would uh, enjoy the story, Big Oil Consultant Resigns with scathing email to 1,400 oil executives 
asking them all to look in the mirror. There is Hopium on steroids asking 1,400 oil executives to look in the mirror. Yes. So, uh, this is, uh, okay, this is Shell, we're talking about Shell oil here. Shell says it has invested billions of dollars in low carbon energy and expects its energy transition spend to reach 50% of total spending by 2050. There we go. A spokesperson for the firm told Fortune that the company is determined to deliver on its pledge to be a net zero company by 2050. Yes. Quote, we're already investing billions of dollars in low carbon energy, although the world will still need oil and gas, gas for decades to come in sectors that cannot be easily decarbonized. And I do agree with that statement. But anyway, so that is the official line from Shell Oil company and this is what I guess uh, one of their executives resigned last week and this was her kiss off letter to uh, Shell Oil Company telling everyone at Shell Oil to look in the mirror a safety consultant resigned from Shell in a blaze of glory when she told executives they needed to admit that the oil giant is, quote, failing on a planetary scale. Yes, UK-based Caroline Dennett took to social media following her resignation to outline why she had ended her 11-year relationship with the Anglo-Dutch oil firm. In her resignation email, which she sent to 1,400 employees and contractors at Shell, she said, despite warnings from the UN and the International Energy Agency, that there was no safe level of new oil and gas extraction, Shell was planning to explore and extract much more. Quote, I can no longer work for a company that ignores all the alarms and dismisses the risks of climate change and ecological collapse. I want Shell executives and management to look in the mirror and ask themselves if they really believe their vision for more, for more oil and gas extraction secures a safe future for humanity. Close quote. Continuing uh, later in another uh, social media post, quote, Shell's disregard for climate change risks means they are completely failing on their goal zero safety ambition to do no harm. Shell is fully aware that their continued oil and gas extraction and expansion projects are causing extreme harms to our climate, environment, nature, and to people. Shell should be using all its capital, technical, and human power to lead this transition, but they have no plan to do this. There you go. I would say uh, asking 1,400 oil executives, how much money has Shell made since the beginning of the Ukraine 
uh, kerfuffle going on over there. I'm sure Shell, like every other oil company, uh, is raking in billions and billions and billions of dollars while uh, we all pony up that gas money the, uh, for our hostages. But anyway, guys, I'm just going to close with this headline. I would like to thank uh, alert uh, listener Jerry Jimenez, Jeremy Jimenez, for sending me this one. Uh, if ever there was uh, hopium, it would be this if I can... Uh-oh, where is it? I'm going to come back to uh, this story for my Sunday sermon from Naviz Ahmed tomorrow. UN warns of total societal collapse due to breaching of planetary boundaries. Uh, this is the latest essay by our old buddy Nafiz Ahmed. I'm going to be back tomorrow with that one, but I really want to, here we go, from Live Science, this could be the single most uh, hopium headline I've read. Uh, <laughs> We're going to go to Cambodia to wrap up this issue. <clears throat> Stop picking carnivorous penis plants. Cambodian environmental officials plead. I don't even want to know what a carnivorous penis plant is, but uh, good luck on keeping people from picking them. Anyway, get out there and enjoy your own carnivorous penis plant while you still can. And uh, I've got to uh, get back to uh, enjoying this drink while I still can. We will be back with Nafiz Ahmed tomorrow. Bye, guys. Yes, little dog. That wasn't that bad. Was that that bad? Not that bad.